In today's video, we're going to talk to you about these things. Indoor climbing holds. We're going to talk about the different kinds and how to use them. So let's do this. Hi, it's Gordon, Fat Old Climber. And as I said, today I'm going to walk you through some of the different holds you can expect to find in indoor climbing centres. We'll talk about the characteristics about each, how you can use them, and what some of the issues might be. Do you have a favourite? Do you have ones that you avoid? Let me know in the comments. If you're not used to using some of these holds, then hopefully this video will be useful for you. So broadly speaking, there's five main types. We have jugs, crimps, slopers, pockets, and pinches. For each one of those, I'm going to go through the defining characteristics, how you might use them, and what pitfalls to watch out for. So let's start with the most basic. The humble jug. When you start climbing, it's the hold you're most likely to see, most likely to be used. It's described because it is jug shaped and you can get your you can grip it with your whole hand. It tends to be used in lower grades and also some overhanging climbs. As the name suggests, it's shaped like a jug that you can grip your whole hand round. You get slightly different types, some are larger, some are smaller. If you have small hands, you might consider some things jugs that people with big hands don't. But the main characteristic is this ability to get your whole hand within the hold. One of the issues with jugs is you can end up over gripping them and that can cause problems with uh, different parts of your hand getting sore. So a thing to do is watch out for where your hand is getting sore. Initially, you're, when you start climbing or you're climbing overhangs, you find sores developing here and progressively as your climbing improves and you're using jugs better, that might move to here, here or even here. So take a look at where your hands are hurting. It's worthwhile when you're trying to advance in your climbing to use less and less of your finger till eventually you might be just using your fingertip on a jug. It's a good exercise for developing onto the more advanced holds. Like the next one, which is the crimp. Crimps are more advanced holds with little edges that are basically only wide enough for maybe one finger pad, sometimes two, sometimes even less than your fingertip. Sometimes they're wide enough for all four fingers, sometimes they're only wide enough for two. Some crimps, like this one, are holds in their own right. Some crimps are actually features on a larger hold and the skill is finding the crimp within the larger hold. Some are very positive with a, a nice edge that you can really pull on and some are a little more rounded or smaller and that's what makes it difficult to become a useful hold. There are three main ways to use crimps. The first one is called an open hand or open crimp or a drag as I call it. In a drag you're basically just putting your fingertips over the edge keeping all your fingers straight and pulling down perpendicular to the edge of the crimp. Typically, you'll be using only three fingers as the pinky is so much shorter and can't get involved. In my experience, when I look about the gym, I see fewer people doing open hand or, or drags than using the other types. And it's useful to be able to practice both, particularly one of the benefits of the open hand or the drag is because your fingers are straight, it's putting a lot less pressure on your tendons, on your pulleys. So it can be a useful rest, if you like, uh, on climbs that are more crimpy. It's also worth working on because if nothing else, you're less likely to injure yourself in this position. I find I have to use a, an open hand because basically I can't support my own weight in a proper crimp position. In the half crimp position, your fingers are bent at the second knuckle, bringing the pads of your fingers more in line with the surface of the crimp, which can make it a far stronger grip than the, the open hand or drag. Also, with this, you can get your pinky involved because it allows all your knuckles to bend at a slightly different position. And this means with more fingers involved, it's automatically a stronger grip than the open hand. Obviously with this position, it puts a lot more strain on the tendons and the pulleys, so it is more prone to injury. The strongest crimp is a full crimp. What it is, is your fingers are in the same position as a half crimp, but you're bringing your thumb up and wrapping it over your fingers and thus locking them in position. It's a very strong position for a crimp. It tends to be used a lot more in very small edges and a lot of people find it a very secure grip to use. 
However, of all of the current positions, it puts the most tension on your tendons and your pulleys, so it's far more prone to injury. It's a useful grip to have in your arsenal, but it should really only be used when you absolutely need to, and you should be mixing between the full crimp, the half crimp, and the drags, if possible. I really can't do a full crimp because I have unfeasibly short thumbs and I find I can't wrap them over my fingers. In all of these types of crimps, finger strength and tendon strength are key, so it's really worth building them up. Just through climbing on crimps, you're, you'll build your finger and tendon strength, but if you want to improve further, you may want to target some development on, for example, hangboard training or fingerboard training. Bear in mind, however, for crimps, you're not only working on finger strength, you're, built, you're working on tendon strength, and tendons take a lot longer to strengthen than muscles do, so it's not a quick process. Realistically, if you're looking to build tendon strength through hangboard training, you should be working on programs lasting weeks. In all cases with crimps, you'll want to keep your forearms perpendicular to the, the angle of the hold so that you can be basically pulling down on them as much as possible and you'll want to try and keep your centre of mass as close to the wall as possible. Really getting your feet under yourself so that some of the weight is taken by your feet and your legs rather than all of the weight being on the crimp. If you're finding this video useful or interesting, then drop it a like. If you're not a subscriber, then consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. Remember to ring the bell so that YouTube tells you when I posted a new video. The next kind of hold we're going to talk about is this beast, the dreaded sloper. When you look around the gym, I think slopers have the widest variety of holds. They can be from massive rounded blobs of plastic to small little round spheres and everything in between. The thing that characterises them most is many of them don't look like there's any way to hold. So a lot of the battle with slopers is finding a way to turn it into a secure hold. A lot of people find slopers particularly difficult, particularly as beginners, but once you unlock their secrets, they can be really fun holds to use. They make a lot of beginners feel very nervous because it's really difficult sometimes to feel secure on a sloper and often you're only using them temporarily to move up to a more secure hold. To use them, you put your whole hand on the sloper, trying to put as much skin on as possible. The more skin, the better. Slopers tend to work by, by utilizing the friction between you, the surface of your hands and the surface of the sloper. Therefore, the more skin, the more friction, the more friction, the more grip. You're also going to want to pay attention to the angle your arm's at. Find whatever position you're putting your hand on and then make sure your angle is perpendicular to that. The ideal position is straight armed, hanging below the sloper, but in the absence of that, you really want your forearm to be perpendicular to the angle you're pulling at. Sometimes you can't get enough friction. What you need to do is turn the grip into a slight crimp at the top. And this can be done in a few ways. If your sloper goes all the way to the wall, then push all your fingers up against the wall and your grip will tend to become like a crimp. So you'll be in a good crimpy position, but also you'll be at the very top of the hold, therefore getting the biggest grip. Alternatively, just put your hands on and imagine just pulling your fingertips towards you. And if you do that enough times, you'll begin to feel the grip increasing. It can be a good way to turn what feels like no grip at all into a secure grip. Of all of the holds, I find slopers are the one that are most prone to build up of chalk. They'll be the ones that benefit most from this little device, the, the trusty brush. You can turn a chalky, slippy, smooth sloper with virtually no friction at all back to its original pristine condition and you can feel a dramatic difference between the before and after. Always use a trusty brush. Next on the list, pockets. As the name suggests, they're round, mainly, holes that you can put a few fingers in, typically three or fewer. They vary in depth and texture, but mainly they don't have a lip you can hold onto. This one's quite deep. I can go all the way into the second knuckle. When using pockets, you're looking for the most effective use of the few fingers that are involved. For three fingers, you'll be using typically all except the pinky. 
again for the same reason as crimps, the pinky is so much shorter. For two fingers, however, you want to be using the strongest two fingers and that's not the same with everybody. For most people, it's going to be the middle two fingers. For some people though, it'll be the index and middle finger. The best way to decide other than strength is look at the length of your fingers and use the two which are closest in length. You're looking at not the length of the fingers but the position of the second knuckle and the closer uh, the second knuckle is in, in position the better. So for me these two fingers are far closer than these two fingers so I would tend to use my index finger and ring finger although I tend to avoid any holds I can only use two fingers. What you might find however is depending on the angle depending on where it is in the climb you might have to use different two fingers and then the worst of all slopers is the dreaded mono, which is basically, if you imagine this hold set this way, is only really leaving enough room for one finger. I cannot do monos. If I was to hang my weight from one finger, I wouldn't have the use of that finger for very much longer. Either way, you want to be careful. You're going to want to go slow. You're going to want to slowly put your fingers in, take the pressure, slowly move, and slowly take your finger out. You don't want to be doing dynamic moves in pockets, particularly manos. I avoid them like the plague. Final on our list, pinches. Pinches are usually vertical, and normally you need both in order to get the grip. Pinches range from this one, which is kind of middle, to large ones that you can basically only get a big hand round, or the tiny ones that you're pinching virtually nothing. To use them, you really need to be getting your thumb involved. They require you to build up the grip pressure by using your thumb, which isn't necessarily something a lot of climbers have developed. Of all the types of holds, I think they're the ones that require the most strength. Bouldering may be about getting from the bottom of the wall to the top of the wall, but really in a lot of cases, it's about solving the problem of how you do that. It's about looking at the holds and working out how you're going to use them to solve the problem. Different hold types present different problems and your ability to use a wide variety of hold types will dramatically affect your ability to solve more and more problems. Generally, climbs will utilize similar hold types, but sometimes you can have a climb that has all types of holds in it. So really, if you want to climb as many problems as possible, you want to develop your ability to use as many hold types as possible. If there are hold types you don't like, or if there are hold types you avoid, then maybe start doing some work on them, train using them, even if it's just by trying to climb climbs that have those hold types. The more you do them, the better you'll get at them. The better you get at them, the better your climbing will get. And before you know it, you'll be topping more climbs. Again, let me know in the comments what your least favourite type of hold is. And if you have a favourite, tell me what one it is and why. Don't forget to drop a like if you found this interesting. And if you haven't subscribed, then subscribe and ring the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.